2 Peter chapter 3, we're going to begin reading at verse number 9 this morning. <clears throat> Excited about what God's going to do in our service. The remaining part of it. Amen. A few weeks ago, I started this series entitled Survival Strategies for Victory in the Latter Days. Just touch on, we talked about what Paul brought to Timothy about perilous times, the things that's going to be happening. We can take those verses and look at them and see our present day time happening like that right now. I talked about how important one of the strategies, how important it is to be, you must be born again if you're going to survive. You've got to be born again. You know, without a born again experience, how how you're going to survive. Last week, we touched on how important it was to guard our heart. I mean, knows that the enemy is looking to invade your life and he comes through your mind into your heart, into your mind and so you will to do everything he can to get you sidetracked. The devil will plant faults in your mind that you're okay. But how many knows your heart protects whether you are or not? It shows. The Bible says from the abundance of the heart of the mouth you will speak. You want to know about people? Listen to their heart. Because it will tell you as they speak what's in there. So today I'm going to find one closes out today. And the title of this one is Never Lose Sight of Eternity. Never Lose Sight of Eternity. Let's read the scriptures together. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. The Lord is not slack concerning His promises as some count slackness. But His long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish but all, should come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come, listen, as a thief in the night, in which the heavens will pass away in a great noise, and the elements will melt with a fervent heat, both the earth and the works there are in it will burn up. Therefore, since all these things will be dissolved, what manner of person are you to be in holy conduct and godliness? Looking for and hastening the coming of the day of God because of which the heavens will be dissolved. Being on fire and the elements will melt before He. Nevertheless, we, according to His promises, look for a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, look forward to those things. Be diligent to be found by Him in peace without spot. And blameless. Father, this morning I pray that you will just touch and captivate our hearts with your presence. I say to you, our liar, this morning, and we come against anything that tries to bring a distraction to our minds, to our spirits. I pray for the next few moments that we will be just engrossed into the Word of God. We'll just be found in your Word, Father, that we just be found listening to what you have to say to us. Because Lord, I believe this word this morning will be for each one of us in this room and everyone that's watching online that we never lose sight of eternity. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to begin with a question this morning. Seconds after you die, where will you be? Seconds after you die here on this earth, where will you be? Where will you be? Living each day, how many of us live, live, like, live each day like it's the last day? Do we live that way? Most of us never think along those lines because we don't think about death. And my message today is not about death. But how many knows that death is something that will come to every one of us in this room if the Lord tarries long enough? Whether we young or whether we old, we don't know what tomorrow holds. But we know who's in charge of tomorrow. The question is, seconds after you die, where will you be? Church, we say this. When you feel like giving up, keep eternity in front of you and realize you have come too far to turn back. Amen. Did you hear what I said, church? Keep eternity in front of you. 
This is not the time nor the hour I believe that we as Christians or even the non-believers should be playing games today. But it's a time to be serious with our relationship with Jesus Christ and our walk with God. I'm not talking about wavering between two opinions. I'm talking about being serious with Jesus. We Christians believe there is a place called heaven and we believe that the Word tells us there's a place called hell. Those are the destinations of man's soul. The second after he leaves here, one of those places his spirit will be. There's no in-between. This morning the question is, is do we have a heaven and hell consciousness? The word consciousness means the state of being awake and aware of one's surroundings. Do we see today what's going on around us? Are we so blind and our minds are so deceived by the enemy that we don't see the times? We don't see the things that are happening? Have we been so deceived by the enemy that we're caught up in this great big old world living our life to please ourselves? Are we living just what we getting our life what we want? I say to you this morning, I pray that each and every one of us in this room, before this day is over, or before the service is over, never lose sight of eternity. Never lose sight of eternity. When we see loved ones who are not in the art of safety, our first thought should be a vision of them plunging into a damnation of hell. That should be our first thought as believers in Christ. To say that we don't have family or friends or co-workers that are not walking with God, are not in the art of safety. We should have a vision of them plunging into hell. The word eternal means endless. Endless. Jesus said these words, and when we cast them into the furnace of fire, there will be a wailing and gnashing of teeth. Hell is forever. Just like heaven is forever. All you enter hell, abandon all hope. The heart of hell for even one second is a miracle forever. To stop and think that we don't sometimes, but stop and just think this morning, one second in hell, how unbearable it will be. And all we keep in the eternal things before us, the things of God, the things that we live for, and how we should live according to His Word. James says our life is like a vapor. Listen to what he says. Whereas you do not know what will happen tomorrow, for what is your life? How are you living your life? What is your life like right now? He goes on and says, is even a vapor that appeared for a little time and then it's gone? How quickly we're here and how quickly we're gone. Job said this, oh, remember that my life is a breath. Some of us are thinking, well, Pastor, i got a long time on this earth. We don't know how long we have. But from this side, eternity will come next. Where will you spend eternity? That's a question we should ask. Jesus gives us a great parable of someone in Luke chapter 12. Go with me there. Luke chapter 12. He talks about a gentleman. Listen to what he says about this man. In Luke chapter 12. Let's begin reading in verse number 16. I want you to get an understanding this morning about this pastor's heart. My heart is this. I want everybody to be ready. Listen to me. I want everybody to be ready. I'm not here trying to say you're not ready, but my heart is I want everyone to be ready. Listen to the parable in verse number, chapter 12, verse 16 of Luke. Then he spoke, and he spoke of a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plenty. And he followed within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crop? So he said, I will do this. I will 
pour down my barns and build greater. And there I will store all my crops and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, So you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then those will then those will these things be which you have provided. Then those who those things will be provided. Notice what he said. So you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. Notice one thing. This man had no conscience of eternity. He only had his thoughts of now. Bill Brayer Barnes. He felt the security around it like many people do today. We put a lot of security in things that we can see, feel, and touch. My friend, our security should not be found in things we see or feel or can touch, but the things called eternity. The man said, I will say to my soul, I have many goods. And many people live that way. But God brought him to reality and said, Food this night your soul is required. Life is not uncertain to God, but it's uncertain to us. God knows what's going to happen tomorrow in our life. But only those who are in true relationship with Jesus Christ will have confidence in tomorrow. We know who's leading us. I encourage you today, never lose sight of eternity. There is a heaven and there is a hell. We're not going to live here on this side forever. Living with an eternal perspective changes how we live in the present time. Eternal perspective. Eternal perspective is this. Eternal perspective changes our focus. We don't get caught up in the things of the earth when we're seeking the things of God. Are we seeking the things of God today? Therefore, our boy is filled with who reminds us of who he is. That we set ourselves apart to seek God with everything within us. Is that what we're doing today? C.S. Lewis said, it is since Christians have largely ceased to think of the other world that they have become so ineffective in this one that we forget about thinking about the other world, heaven. Joseph Storwell said, when we begin to believe the reality of the other side, we start behaving differently on this side. Are we behaving differently? This morning I want to look at three things. Never lose sight of eternity. What kind of person ought we to be? Listen to what Peter said. Therefore, since we all these things will be dissolved, what manner of person ought we to be in holy conduct and in godliness? The word manner means what kind or sort of person I am supposed to be. What kind of person are we supposed to be? Peter said this, live having escaped the corruption that is in the world. If we have come out of this world, we've escaped this corruption, this world that we call living around in today. If we've come out of it because of what Jesus Christ has done for us, we've got something to look forward to. We've got something to believe in. Believers, we must live differently because of who we are in Christ. Now, we're not there. If we're going to be a Christian. I don't have to wear a t-shirt to prove that I'm a Christian. I don't have to wear a stuff to say that I'm a Christian. My conduct of how I live my life should dictate who I am. That's what people want to see. I'm a firm believer that people want to see the true, genuine believers. They've seen enough of the other. The Word of God tells us we're strangers and pilgrims heading for a better world. Paul said, Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. When you come to Christ, now we, our citizenship is not here, but we have a place far beyond this earth. I, I'm not building my roots too deep here, hallelujah, because there's a far better place that I'm going to one day. Hallelujah. We should be looking for a city whose builder and maker is God. A city not made with man's hands. Christians should be different, as I said 
while ago. We should be odd. Can I tell you, different attracts people. Odd repels people. I don't have to walk around and, and, and you know, I'm trying to live this spiritual life and I'm going to float around. No, I'm talking about living everyday life according to the way the Word of God tells me to live. Because if Jesus is living in me and through me, can I tell you, I'm going to dictate Christ to people. And people want to see Jesus. I want to say again, people want to see Jesus in us. Every day. Peter said that an eternal perspective will change the way you behave. What man or person ought you to be? Notice what he said. Holy conduct and godliness. Holy conduct refers to action. It refers to the way I live my life. What rules govern me and my behavior? Peter said, but he calls us as holy. You also be holy in all your conduct. The word conduct means the manner in which a person behaves. Because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. How does God want our, our conduct to be? It's holy. We're to take on His nature. God is the standard of holiness. What a challenge that God is calling us to be holy in this unholy time. Listen, church, holy. Well, Pastor, I can't. You can't unless Jesus lives in you. And lives through you. And then you can live what he's saying for us to live in holy conduct. In holy living for Jesus. God created us in his image. And we ought to resemble him in our lifestyle every day. I don't put on a suit and come to church and represent Jesus. But I represent him on Monday. Tuesday. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That's what people want to see. They want to see the real deal. And I'm not saying we're better. I'm just saying that's what we ought to be. Because when the Bible says, if I can humble myself, then that's when God can begin to exalt us and lift us up. How important it is. Notice he said godliness. It refers to your attitude. Godliness refers to the spirit of reverence that which rules my heart. Godliness in the Greek means to worship well. Describes a person whose life is devoted in pleasing God. Amen. The question I should ask, are you pleasing God? I ask myself that same question, God, am I pleasing you? <laughs> Does my attitude please you? Does my behavior please you? Does my conduct please you? Does everything that I do please you? Oh, Pastor, do you ever get angry? Sure. Do you ever get upset? Sure. But I never want to get to the place that it just... Have you ever... As they always say, it flew off the hand. You ever flew off the hand? Amen. Many times, praise the Lord. What happens when we fall off the hand? Many times we say things we shouldn't say. We act like we shouldn't act. Remember one thing. What... How does God want us to live? Holy conduct and godliness. What does it mean to live a godly life? It means this. You can't live it unless you're born again. I'm telling you, you can't live a godly life until you're born again. Because see, when you got saved, you know what you did? You died. That's what happened to us when we got saved. We died. The Bible says we're to die to self. Pick up the cross and follow Jesus. So my whole focus is not about me, myself, not my focus now, is about Jesus. And when our focus becomes Jesus, can I tell you, we can live a godly life. To have a devoted heart to pursue the knowledge of Jesus Christ and His Word. How important it is going to 1 Peter, now it's 2 Peter chapter 1. In 1 Peter chapter 1, let's begin reading in verse number 3. 2 Peter, excuse me, chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3. And His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who calls us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. 
verse 5, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to your virtue knowledge, and knowledge self-control, and self-control perseverance, and perseverance godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will be neither bearing nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his own sins. Notice the conduct that we are to take on. Notice the godliness that we are to live. How should we live this life if we are in pursuit of God? The question is, after a period of time, are we growing in the knowledge of God? That's the question. Are we growing in the knowledge of God? A godly life is a separate life from this world and for sin. We don't partake in those things. We come out of those stuff. How many knows you can't go back into the old environments? You can't go back into those old environments. Well, Pastor Wayne, listen, if the Lord tells you to go witness, fine. If He tells you not to, you better stay out of it. My second point, we're to live with expectancy. Notice what 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 12 and 13 says. Notice here in the Word of God. It says this, verse 12, Looking for and hasting the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved, being on fire, and the elements will melt with fervent heat. Nevertheless, we, according to His promises, look for a new heaven and a new earth in which righteousness dwell. Therefore, behold, looking forward to those things, be diligent to be found by Him in peace without spot or blameless. Notice Peter using the word look forward. Three times he said look forward, or two times he said look forward, look forward, and the final time he says look forward. The idea of expectancy, waiting with urgency, waiting with an alertness, being ready, being ready, means this, looking for the coming of God. How many looking for the coming of the Lord? Amen. Oh man, we can all get excited about that, can't we not? Looking for, looking for the new heaven and the new earth. One day, a new heaven and a new earth. Praise God. Looking for, looking for those things which are to come, church. The word looking in the present tense indicates that this is a lifestyle we need to live. Is looking to what's coming. What's coming. Are you continuing living with an eternal perspective? If we do, we will radically impact those that we live around. The idea is to wait for, look for, to expect. The coming of Jesus Christ to give us the greatest motivation for living a godly life. If Jesus is going to come, and the Bible says, the Word said, if I go away, if I go away, church, you always say, I'm coming back. I don't know when He's coming, but He's coming. But if I don't have holy conduct, and I don't live a godly life, but you know, you know what? I've made up my mind a long time. I'm going to have my sight set on eternity with Jesus Christ. I've set my sights there. I cannot wait till we get to heaven and enjoy that time. Oh my Lord, have you thought about it? Think about it. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we. Y'all did catch that. Yeah. Then we who are alive and remain shall be called together with them in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. And this we shall always be with the Lord. Oh, Think about it, church. If we don't keep our, 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 our eternal perspective, if we don't have expectancy, I'm expecting, I don't think expecting God to do something. Amen. I came this morning believing God. God do something on this. The Father spoke to us. He spoke to us this morning to know. He said, I won't leave you. I'm with you. Letting us know. But let me say this. We should have an expectancy because we know you're not be here tomorrow. And he's been watching a little bit of the news. They got all this UFO things going around. You ever heard that? I mean, they got to have some reason when we leave this wall. When we are acting out here, they got to wonder well, what the hell, the aliens came and go. That's a crazy thing on the planet. 
But they gotta do something. But you know what? We're not gonna be ratchet out of some aliens. Jesus Christ Himself, the one that led and died on the cross and gave His life for all mankind, went to the tomb, was buried, rose on the third day, came back, walked upon the scraps of earth for 40 days, and then He ascended to the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. Then He allowed Pentecost to come. Glory to God. And filled 120 with the power of God to do the works of God. Let me tell you, He's still filling people today to do the works of God. If we get our eyes set on eternity, honey, these things of the world will not matter no more. Because one day, heaven is going to be a part of us. Glory to God. I thought what's it already gone on before us. One day I believe we'll see it again. But the most important one I want to see is my Jesus because of the price that he paid. Final point. We're to live with diligence. Listen to what he said in the latter part of verse 14. Be diligent to be found by him in peace without spot and blameless. What one is looking for should have a direct relationship, a relationship to what one is living. The word diligent means persistent. Work or effort. Listen, we're not going to get there without some persistent work, being diligent. Our Christian walk. The writer of Hebrews says, And we desire that each one of you show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope until the end. You know what he's saying? Don't stop now. Living the life you're living for the Lord. Don't stop. Be diligent. Peter's words. He said this, be without spot. It means, refers to your character. Without spot. What's really on the inside of you. What's living within you. Because there's no hidden things to God inside of you. He knows everything about us. He said to be blameless. Refers to the very reputation of who we are. And how to relate to other people. Peter said the results will be found by him in peace. I thank God. I say, I want you, as I said this before, I want God to find peace within me as I live in this hour today. I want peace to be over me. I'm not troubled about what's going on around us. I'm not fearful this morning. Why? Because my peace is found in Jesus. Right. And when your peace is in Christ, you don't trouble what the world is like. There can be a chaos all around you, but you can have peace. Because peace comes from Jesus. The question we can ask ourselves, are we living with eternity in sight? There's an old song that I have sung about the song. And the song goes like this, Are You Ready? Remember that old song? It goes like this, There's a great day coming, a great day coming, there's a great day coming by and by, when the saints and the sinners shall be departed. They shall be departed right and, right and left. And are you ready for that day to come? There is coming a day, church, when that's going to happen. The sinners and the saints are going to be parted. Can you think about it this morning? If we don't have eternity on our mind, then what do we have on our mind? Many times we have things that pleases us and what we want in life. Many times, what can I have to do this, get better here, get have that? And you know what? We should just be one thing about having eternity on our mind to know that one day it's going to end. If you were told you were going to die within 24 hours, what would you do? If you had 24 hours left upon this earth, what would you do? In 24 hours, your life would end here on this earth. What would you do? We don't think of all those terms, and I know that's sometimes Pastor Wayne asks those type of questions. Well, I just want us to bring to a place of reality because we don't know in the next 24 hours what we'll be. The only one that knows is God. But if I live with eternity in focus, what kind of person are we to be? If I'm living with holy conduct in godliness, and I've got an expectancy to know I'm looking for the coming of Jesus. I, I know that He's coming one day. And you know what? I want to be diligent about what I do for the Lord. I don't want to be found not doing what I need to be doing. How important it is. Because see, that persistent work for Jesus, wherever you may be, the question is, 
If you knew you were going to leave this walk alive in 24 hours, would you be in fear or peace? For where you'd be headed. Because we that are in Christ should be in peace. But those that are outside the ark of safety should think about it. Where would you be? As I begin this sermon this morning, I'm going to end it this way. Seconds after you die, where would you be? Is your mind on things that are eternal? Do I have an eternal perspective of what's going on? Or I'm just living life and enjoying it. And that's the way some people are living it. And my friends, that's not a good place to be. A good place to be is know that you're in the ark of safety, that you're ready to meet Jesus. That you prepared yourself. Because the devil is looking for any crack to get into your heart to cause you to lose your focus, lose that reality of eternity that is coming one day. I don't know about you, but I'm going to keep myself prepared. I'm going to keep my eyes looking to the things eternal. Because one day it's going to be reality. And whatever they want to do after that here on this earth, just let them do it. You know what? Because they want to, whatever they want to do, they can just do it. You know why? Because we're going to be in the presence of Jesus forever and ever and ever. There's not going to be no more party. There's not going to be more sickness, no more death, no more pain, no more sorrow. And those that have paid the price and gone on before us one day, I believe will greet us there when we get there. There's a lot of people I don't want to see when we get there. The most important person I want to see is the one that died for me. He's called Jesus. Thank you this morning. If you're watching this morning on Facebook, we want to say thank you for tuning in. I don't know where you stand with the Lord, but I pray this morning that your heart is prepared to meet Him. I pray that eternity is in focus in your life, that you don't lose sight of what God is doing and wants to do in your life. Church, let's pray. Father, this morning we thank You. We thank You so much for those that are tuned in this morning. Lord, we don't know where they stand with You, but You do. And Father, wherever they may be, I pray that you will reach into their heart by Examine, let them examine themselves and see where they stand between God and eternity. And Lord, I pray that they will find themselves in you. I pray, Lord, that their heart will be drawn to you in Jesus' name. And we give you praise this morning. We give you thanks. We thank you for watching. We'll see you next Sunday.